Aloha everyone, my name is Dane DuPont and this is May 28th of the 2018 Kilauea eruption. So following hell night on May 27th, this was the scene that many people awoke to. Early in the morning, Fisher 24 is still active and putting down a lava flow that's going into the mouth of Fisher 8. This would become the well-defined cinder cone 200 feet tall and the well-pronounced lava channel that we're all too familiar with. This is what it looked like before Fisher 8 turned on and stayed on. While the majority of the lava erupted in Hell Night on May 27th did go to the north, a good amount of it pancaked around the base of Fisher 8 and expanded the flanks on the south side of the flow, claiming several houses in the process. But an entire street here is lost in the night. Dozens of homes gone. And just look how wide this flow is about to show. The profile of it is humongous. The lava you see here, this is all fresh stuff. All erupted overnight. Just a huge amount of lava taking out so many homes. So much property taken. So many memories buried. Heirlooms lost. And who knows what else. So coming into view on the left is a bunch of really large trees poking out of the lava. These are albizia trees. Some of them are roughly 100 foot tall. But it gives a really good example of how lava tree molds are made. The lava will come in, surround the trees, but the trees don't burn away right away. So as the lava hardens, the tree burns, but the lava preserves a mold into the flow field of what that tree once was. Now these albizia tree molds are kind of interesting. I don't think that many of these have been made into lava tree molds before. These are relatively new invasive species that have spread over the last several decades, and the last eruption in this area was 1955 and 1960. So these tree molds are really unique, to me at least, in just how large and how intricate they are. Now progressing on into the early afternoon, this video shows a really cool little vortex, a um, bunch of gas, caught in an updraft off of the flow field and these were relatively common during the eruption the hard part was capturing them it felt like every time somebody would see one by the time they got a camera out or the phone out it was gone kind of just like that now you can see a lot of this flow is hardened up there's not a lot of lava getting fed into the flow front at this point in time but that's soon about to change so now you're looking at the Kahukai Kipuka again and Fisher 13 still active. And then the camera pans looking up the rift zone back towards Fisher 8. But we're looking across a dozen other fissures before we get there. Many of these ones have been buried by larger lava flows after they erupted initially. So you can see where the steam and the gas is coming out. That's where the, a lot of these fissures were. So coming into view now is Fisher 7, active once again. There's a good amount of lava coming out of those vents, but there isn't a very significant lava flow. Which is curious in that it either just started erupting again, or there's something more at play. And we're about to see that in a minute as to what that is. But we're kind of in a ping pong right here between the fissures as everything starts to centralize at Fisher 8. So these are the hours leading into the full reactivation of Fisher 8. So we're going to be doing a flyby of Fisher 7 here, but you can see how the fresh lava has a different coloration than the stuff that's dried already. The fresh stuff is still a gray, whereas everything a little bit older has a more of a dark coloration to it. Speaking of coloration, if you look on the left hand side, you'll see all the vegetation is brown. It's been cooked by the gas emissions, which have been pushed that direction by the predominant wind patterns. And it has done a number in that area. On the eastern side, on the north side, it's not so bad. Uh, but on the south side, it has really done a number. As we pass over Fisher 8, you can see it's not active currently. And we're going to go up rift a little ways and see Fisher 24 also has ceased erupting at this point in the mid-afternoon. And now we're coming up to Fisher 24. Uh, 
thing that stands out to me on Fisher 24 right here is just how much of a cinder cone it was able to build overnight. It's pretty significant, and there had to been a good amount of lava coming out of that thing. This video started off with a shot of Fisher 24, and at that point in the early morning, it was still pumping. Now, this is mid-afternoon, and all you can see in it is a little bit of a glow. Fisher 8, not a lot of action there. Fisher 7's going. But let's take a little bit of a closer look at Fisher 7. Coming into view is part of the reason why Fisher 7 wasn't putting out a big lava flow. You can see two eruptive vents, but then a third one that's draining lava back underground. The drone is taking off from Leilani Avenue, looking immediately at Fisher 7, which is still active back there, hidden behind all the fog. But coming in the view on the right, that's a reactivated Fisher 8. And you can already see that gray lava that it's been able to start channeling towards the north in what would become the Fisher 8 lava channel. It's still kind of pancaking around the area. It's still in its early, early, early stages. But activity is beginning to centralize around it. We're panning to the right, looking at Fisher 24. Not seeing a whole lot other than gas going through the neighborhood. And that is not a good wind pattern for Leilani Estates. That is going to be nasty to be in there at that point. It's dusk now. We're a couple miles away from Fisher 8 in this shot. You can see just how tall those fountains are. These things got big quickly. 8 p.m. in the shot. Fisher 8 has fully reactivated and is putting down a rather immense lava flow. The flow is going over much of the same area that was covered on May 27th in Hell Night, but it's also going off of that area and extending the flanks in certain spots, taking more houses when it does it. But it's just a huge amount of lava coming out right now. And thus began the reign of Fisher 8. This one fissure would put out more lava than the rest of the eruptive vents combined over the course of the eruption. It truly was a sight to behold. Even with the destruction, the pain, and all of that mixed in, just seeing it was awe-inspiring. There was so much lava coming out of this thing that's really hard to put into words. Just think of dozens and dozens of Olympic-sized swimming pools just coming out in the biggest fountain that you've ever seen all in a matter of seconds and doing it over and over and over for weeks without interruption the rest of the vents they kind of bounced around they'd have their moment in the sun and then they calm down fisher 8 wasn't having none of it fisher 8 was going to go until fisher 8 was done and when it finished it would be known as ahu Ao the altar of the forest eater. All right, that'll do it for May 28th of the 2018 eruption. The next one, we're gonna do something a little bit different. I did say that we were gonna continue on from here through the rest of the eruption using the unoccupied aircraft system footage from USGS. Instead, we're gonna throw it back to the beginning of the eruption. And I'm gonna expand the archive of footage to all publicly available sources and some other sources thrown in on top to kind of help the storytelling along. So I hope you join me on May 3rd, the third anniversary of the 2018 eruption to commemorate that day. And then we're gonna walk through the eruption, hopefully one video for one day, but no promises. We'll see what we can do. And hopefully it's interesting. Hopefully you get a little bit of different perspective. Hopefully I'm able to keep pace with it all. All right, hope to see you there.